downtown. That's right. When it gets dark, all black folk, you off the street. Uh -huh. Only certain races can be on the that's street. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like an old time tradition. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Still prevalent yeah. today yeah. and accepted. Yeah. But now one of the most important things though, Brother Baxter, mm -hmm. is that uh, even though that might be the, the prevailing sentiment right. when it comes to voting, we still only have six percent of our black folks. Voting. Yes, sir. That's what I want you to do. Okay. I want you okay. to tell black folks how important. All right. I want you okay. To tell people. Okay. How important it is. Okay. And if we can tell people how important people. it is, we okay. get you a few black folks. All right. You okay. So okay. It's, so it's not just a black okay. problem. I've participated yeah. in the suffrage. And, and Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is African Americans and the political process, and we're fortunate to have with us to talk about African American and the political process, uh, Dr. James Baxter, uh, who was formerly at uh, Tennessee State University, and now he is in the uh, city of Jackson. And Dr. Baxter, let me thank you for coming down uh, and talking to us this morning about what we consider to be and what I know you also yes, consider to be yes. the very, very important topic, and that yes. is African-Americans and the political process. Okay. Let's start off by having uh, you give us some information about another African-American uh, by the name of James Baxter okay. Okay. and talk about his background, okay. your education, and some of the okay. things that were important in terms of eventually okay. bringing you here today, and then we'll okay. get into the topic of African-Americans okay. and political process right. after this okay. first segment. First of all, Dr. Haney, it's always a pleasure to be on your show. I want to thank you for inviting me. Yes, I am a native Nashvilleian. I enjoyed the TSU experience both as a graduate student 
uh, and as a assistant professor. Uh, I'm currently in Jackson, Tennessee, but I always claim Nashville is home. It's no place like home, and I've been of the mindset that you can go home when you can't go anywhere, anywhere else. else. <laughs> uh, I'm a graduate of North Nashville High School. Uh, I'm an undergraduate of Lane College, which is in Jackson, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and I hold the master's and the doctorate from Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. uh, I retired from secondary education out of Nashville by way of White's Creek High School. Formerly, I served at Hillsborough High School in conjunction with teaching at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so glad I went to TSU mm -hmm. University, Tennessee State University. And again, I'd like to thank you for having me. Uh, when I lived in Nashville a few years ago, uh, I ran for a criminal court clerk. Uh, I ran for a, um, a state senator out of the 20th district, and I also ran for vice mayor of Nashville Davidson County. So we're very diversified, both with our ex uh, work experiences, mm -hmm. and certainly uh, I do have a, a political aspiration. Mm -hmm. I just recently uh, ran for Madison County clerk. Of course, we did not prevail in the race, but sometimes in life I'm learning that we do win in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. So I count it all joy, and I just thank the Lord for all he's doing in this season. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, we're just glad to have you here with us this Thank morning, you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Baxter. Let's Thank talk you. about uh, what the uh, topic uh, African-Americans in the political process. We've got okay. about two minutes before this okay. segment is over. Okay. And so give, give us some statements in reference to black folks participating in politics. And okay. then we'll pick it up uh, during the next two segments. All right. Well, Dr. Haney, I'd like to make a general statement in saying that when we look at people of color and especially African-American people, and then when we look at the United States in general, we're in, a, we're in what is called a reactionary period. When we look at our political structure, and certainly when we look at the federal government, we know who's in power there. We have a, a upper chamber uh, of our federal government uh, that's controlled by the Democratic Party. Uh, we could lose that control uh, 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 in the election of 2016. It's very important mm -hmm. that uh, in the election of 2016, everything that looked like us need to go to the polls for more reasons than one. But you have the upper chamber of Congress, which is the Senate, uh, that, that's majority Democrat, but it's the lower chamber where we find the Republicans are in charge. Mm -hmm. Even though we have an African-American president, it's been very difficult mm -hmm. for him to to, to, to get his agenda through the current Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when we look then at this Republican Party that controls uh, the lower chamber, which is the House of Representatives, there is a movement in America to take us back to a period in history where we do not need to go. Mm -hmm. Now, there's an old saying that the more things change, the, the more, more they, they remain the, the same. same. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, unless we exercise the ballot, we're going to find ourselves facing some difficult days ahead. I find it, I, I, I find it very disappointing when we look at uh, the many strides towards freedom. When you look at the gains we as a people made uh, after the Civil War. When we think in terms of the 1866 mm -hmm. Civil Rights Act. Uh, and then we look at the, the 1964 Civil Rights Act, mm -hmm. when we look at the Voters Rights Act, all of these laws, all of these rights were gained uh, mm -hmm. right after the Civil War with the 1866 Civil Rights Act. When you look at the 13th, the 14th, and 15th Amendments, mm -hmm. sometimes referred to as the Negro and of course, Dr. Brecker, we're going to have to take a okay. break. And sure. we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you and welcome back to the second uh, segment of this show for today. We're talking to Dr. Uh, James Baxter, who's given us some information concerning African-American political participation uh, after the uh, Civil War. And Dr. Baxter, let's pick up where we left off during the first uh, segment okay. to have you to give us some information in relative to African-American political participation okay. and the impact of their political participation during okay. this next eight-minute segment. All right. Well, well, Dr. Haney, when we look at these United States of America after the Civil War, uh, we must understand uh, that, that the South, the Southern region of the United States was in ruin and that most of the Civil War was fought in the South. Uh, after the Civil War, Johnny comes marching home. Uh, the economy was disrupted because of the war being fought in the South. Uh, in the South, we have four million uh, former slaves in the South. We have a labor force that no longer exists simply because the slaves are now free. But not only that, you have a large population of poor whites, underclass whites. It's now a matter of survival. It's now a matter of restoring the economy, rebuilding the economy of the South. For the most part, the South was still uh, an agricultural region whose economy was based on agriculture. The North, an industrial region. Now, uh, the, the Southern states must rebuild its economy. And, and the economy would still be based, for the most part, on agriculture. Mm -hmm. But now you need a labor force that you no longer have. Slaves are free. So then we come up with this uh, a crop lien system. We come up with a sharecropping system. We come up with ways of regaining a, a labor force that, that, that's no longer available to us. But not only that, uh, Dr. Haney, when you look at the South after the Civil War, we go into a period that is known as Reconstruction. Now you have a Republican government, unlike the Republican government of this day. You have a Republican government that that, that uh, you have a Republican Party that's now in control of the Congress. And what they want to do in the South, they want to give the ballot, and they gave the ballot uh, to, to freed men. They gave them the ballot, they gave them citizenship. They gave them equal protection under the law. Mainly we're making reference to the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. Well. The federal government would pass the 1866 Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. These laws were already on the books. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the, 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 the government uh, passed also uh, uh, the, the 1866 Civil Rights Act to make people of color in the mm -hmm. South a freed men equal to whites. Mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, when we come into the 20th century, the year would be 1964. We would have to revisit and pass what becomes known as the 1964 Civil, Civil Rights Act. Act. <laughs> then we would also pass the 1965 Voters' Rights <laughs> Act, when all of these issues had been addressed during the Reconstruction period. So as I stated earlier, Dr. Haney, what we're dealing with in America today, we're in a reactionary movement. And, the, and, and, and within that movement, uh, we have those who are, who are in federal government, mainly the Republican Party, the Tea Party people. Mm -hmm. They want to take this country back into a period of history where we do not need to go as a country. Well, when we look at America today, uh, uh, states have changed mm -hmm. their, 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 their requirements in order to vote, okay? Now, what you want to do then, you want to take the ballot. You want to take the right to vote mm -hmm. to, to minority, from minorities mm -hmm. uh, to other poor people that live in these United States of America. Well, one would probably add, raise the question, why? When we look at America today, mm -hmm. most sociologists will refer to, to the population in America today not as a majority Caucasian population, mm -hmm. but what we are experiencing 
is what is called the browning of, of America. America. Mm -hmm. So see, that's why we got to go backwards. Mm -hmm. We got to take some rights away from some people. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so hard for President Barack Obama to deal with the Im immigration problem that mm -hmm. we're having in America. Because for us to let immigrants into the country, for the most part, they would probably come in greater numbers out of Mexico, uh, Central and South America. But for us to open up the gates mm -hmm. and let these immigrants into America, then Caucasians mm -hmm. as a population, they're becoming more and more mm -hmm. a minority and people of color will then become more and more of the majority mm -hmm. of the population that make up the United States. So then we have to do something about this, okay? Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We start chipping away. We start chipping away of their rights, their rights to citizenship, their equal rights to vote, uh, the rights of, of desegregation versus segregation. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the few but many problems we are having to address in America as we continue to go through what I like to call a reactionary period. Now, when we think about voting, voting rights in America as, as citizens mm -hmm. of these United States of America, we certainly have to think about those, uh, those, those people who gave their lives. Mm -hmm. We think about people like uh, Mega Evers, uh, you remember Mega, Mega, uh, Mega he was the well. president mm -hmm. of the uh, and, NAACP, NAACP. Mm -hmm. in Jackson, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and he was, he, was, he was very aggressive in getting uh, uh, people of color in the state of Mississippi registered to vote. And then, of course, one night he came home and pulled into his driveway, and he was shot down, cold-blooded murder by way of an assassin's bullet. Mega worked hard. Uh, to help us to get registered and exercise that right. But not only Mega, we'd have to think about Jesse, we'd have to think about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., mm -hmm. the 1964 Civil Rights Act, and then the 1965 Voters uh, uh, Rights Act. But for some reason, Dr. Haney, when we look at America today, we don't turn out in numbers and vote mm -hmm. uh, as a people the way we should. And yet we have so many, so many noted people like Mega and, 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 and Martin King Jr. Mm -hmm. and others who were on the battlefront mm -hmm. so that we could have not only civil rights, but voters' rights. Very, and, uh, uh, let's take this commercial break okay. and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break.
Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. James Baxter from Jackson, Tennessee, uh, by way of Nashville, Tennessee, and he's given us some information relative to the political participation of African Americans in the political process. And Dr. Baxter, during this last segment that we have, uh, what we'd like for you to do is to uh, uh, explain in a real sense why black, not only black folks, uh, Hispanic folks or whatever, mm -hmm. why people ought to be willing to participate in the political process and why they, why, why the participation would in, in a real sense eliminate a large number of challenges that they have in almost every category. Okay. Well, Dr. Haney, I think the major problem or the major reason minority people or people of color as well as those who are in the underclasses of poor people don't vote simply because they don't believe that their vote will make a difference. Dr. Haney, every vote counts. Every vote. Every vote counts. If people would come to the realization of the importance of their vote, I believe they would be more aggressive in going to vote. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as was stated years ago, a voteless people uh, uh, a voteless people is a powerless people. Uh, as I was talking to a friend in Jackson, Tennessee, a few weeks ago, we had a local election in Jackson, Tennessee. The turnout among African American people or people of color was only 10 percent. And I'm told even here in Nashville. Can you imagine that 10 percent? I, I cannot one imagine. Out of, uh, of 10, I, uh, uh, 10 out of 100. I could not imagine that in 2014. <laughs> But as I was talking to a friend in Jackson, Tennessee, he said to me, uh, Dr. Baxter, we have to do more than just tell our people to get out to vote. Our people, before they'll get out to vote, they must feel it before they'll actually go out and do it. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we can't feel it. And the more I thought about it, the more I would agree with him. And let me just qualify by saying this. Do you remember? when President Barack Obama ran for president in 2008 mm -hmm. and then again in 2012. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why he was elected and then re-elected in 2012 is simply because people of color across America, they, 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 they were convinced that it was the right thing to do mm -hmm. and they felt it mm -hmm. and, they and, 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 and because they, they were able to feel it, they went out and they voted. Mm -hmm. Some had to stand for hours. Mm -hmm. Some even went to the polls with their lawn chairs and mm -hmm. their reading materials, but come hell or high water, they went on out there mm -hmm. and they exercised their right to vote. A few weeks ago in Madison County, when we were having the general election, as I would make the campaign trail and give the speeches from here to there, I would tell our people, look, we've got to get our vote out. Mm -hmm. Go vote, go early vote, uh, uh, just like you did when we elected President Barack Obama and when we re-elected him in 2012, you got to have that same feeling. You got to have that same zeal. You have got to get out and vote knowing in your heart that your vote will make a difference. Well, in America, uh, as a people, we have acquired so much apathy mm -hmm. along the way. Now, let me qualify that. Let's go over to Missouri. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to Ferguson, Missouri. The majority of people living in that town, they look like us. Mm -hmm. They could solve their own problem mm -hmm. with their locally elected officials. Mm -hmm. They can solve their own problems with with any ordinance that is passed simply by can they, executing their ballot. Right, can they, they not can, understand that, uh, Dr. Baxter? I mean, does, is that so difficult to understand? Is, but, I mean, what it's, we, it's not difficult. Um, uh, it, it's a mindset. Now, now, when you look at the ongoing generation, I would have to blame, I would have to blame us. Uh, because those of us who are baby boomers, those of us whose parents joined in with Dr. King and others in the civil rights movement, as soon as we received our education and as soon as we received that credit card and as soon as we received uh, 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 the right mm -hmm. to be able to go wherever and 
shopping mm -hmm. certain yeah, areas yeah, like and accommodation yes. and soon as we and, yes sir as mm -hmm. soon as we uh, uh, saw that we could go to all of these places we let our guards down but not only did we let our guards down we failed to tell our children uh, uh, the Jews are going to always talk about the Holy Cause. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the Japanese are always going to talk about when they were uh, incarcerated, incarcerated mm -hmm. camps here in the United States of America. But we fail to tell our sons and daughters the story. Mm -hmm. So what do we have in America today? We have a generation of people of color, and it has perpetuated itself. But we have a gen an ongoing generation who think, for the most part, that what they are enjoying today in America, it's always been this way. Mm -hmm. So they have let their guards down, feeling that the struggle is over. No, no, the struggle is never over. Mm -hmm. The fight for freedom is ongoing. I remember, Dr. Haney, when James Baldwin wrote a letter to Angela Davis mm -hmm. in his most noted novel, Native Son. She was in prison in San Quentin, California. James Baldwin in the letter, in essence, he told Angela Davis, if they come for me today, Good. or if they come for you today, mm -hmm. then tonight mm -hmm. they will be coming for me. Yeah, yeah. So what we have to do, we have to, we have to strongly uh, initiate a voter education program all across America mm -hmm. that, will, that will educate uh, 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 all of the people, regardless of your social class, regardless of your race, people need to understand mm -hmm. the importance of exercising that ballot. Now, because we had a low voter turnout here in Davidson County, somewhere around 6%, because of the low voter turnout in Madison County, which was 10%, and all across Tennessee, what does that implicate mm -hmm. to people of color? and to poor people. Because Dr. Haney, for the most part, when we look at the overall struggle, we're, we're dealing with class struggle. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with race, and we're dealing with class struggle. What does that mean to those who fall under this large underclass mm -hmm. umbrella? It means that we're gonna have some difficult days ahead. When we look at Madison County, all of our local officials, they are Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. and they are members of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. We elected in Jackson-Madison County a Republican sheriff. We, re we elected another Republican judge. When we had an opportunity in Madison County to re-elect mm -hmm. an African-American judge, to elect an African-American city judge, and to also elect yours truly as the clerk of Madison County, but we stayed at home. This means, Dr. Haney, mm -hmm. that if you go uh, 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 to jail for whatever crime you may have committed, you're going to face a white judge, okay? If you have any problems with the sheriff's department uh, in Jackson, Madison County, you got to deal with a Republican sheriff mm -hmm. and all of his deputies. We're in for some difficult days, Dr. Haney, across the board in Tennessee. Now, as you already know, the legislature is, is majority Republican Party. Mm -hmm. This legislature in Tennessee is controlled by the Republican Party. We have a governor mm -hmm. who is also a member of the Republican mm -hmm. Party. Until we wake up across Tennessee and all across America and realize that casting that ballot makes a difference in more ways than one, mm -hmm. then we're going to continue to see ourselves going back into a period of American history where we really don't, don't need to, to go. go. Okay, very good. Now, Dr. Baxter, let me uh, take this last, th these last few seconds mm -hmm. to thank you for bringing by that uh, excellent information. And uh, in a real sense, uh, uh, informing us yes. of not only some of the traditions, but the importance of uh, the future in terms of what, right. what uh, African Americans, underclass Same folks, uh, all of these individuals mm -hmm. who are shut out what right. they have to do in order to become yeah. a part of the system. So and of course, important. let me thank you and let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.
three minutes, okay? Yeah, I'm trying to load the radar. It's slow. Uh, no, because I don't have my IFB. It's in the other room. Um, just give me a standby. Hey, Eric, I'm getting ready to do a cut in real quick. It's fine. You can stay. I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll go less than four. And good afternoon, Chief Meteorologist Katie Morgan with you here. We want to give you a quick update to these severe thunderstorms that are rolling through Middle Tennessee now. These have popped up within the past hour and really have a lot of juice. If you've stepped outside, you know how hot and humid it is. Check out the latest uh, severe thunderstorm warnings that we have in effect now. This is a severe thunderstorm warning until 245 for DeKalb, Cannon, and Wilson counties, also Smith County. Uh, why I'm cutting in this storm here has the uh, potential to produce 70 mile per hour winds. So Smithville, Sparta, you're in the path of this storm here. And what I've been looking at as far as the uh, radar scans go, winds in excess of 60 to 70 mile per hour straight line winds. Notice too that this is an electric storm. It does look like the National Weather Service out of uh, Nashville has already included a new thunderstorm warning that uh, will be in effect until uh, 3 p.m. here. Uh, let's check out uh, the other one uh, that we have now. This is all from one cell. Uh, this storm here is uh, going to include uh, Sparta as well. This uh, thunderstorm warning, the uh, polygon that you see there. This one uh, for White County as well as DeKalb County until 3 p.m. Uh, we're looking at severe thunderstorms capable of producing damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour, moving southeast at 45. Now, in addition to those straight line winds, and frequent lightning. We're looking at very heavy downpours also as a possibility. Uh, we are going to continue to watch this here. Cannon County uh, also as we head down towards uh, McMinnville, you are going to be in the path of this thunderstorm as well. Let's put a quick track on this here and we'll put this at about 45 miles per hour as these move to the southeast. Again, McMinnville reaching you all in about 16 minutes. So again, we're watching these thunderstorms uh, produce very good gusty winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. Here's the current picture over Tennessee. A few thunderstorms off of I-40 and then in East Tennessee looks like we do have a uh, tornado warning in effect that outside of the uh, viewing area. But again, we'll continue to watch these thunderstorms uh, capable of producing very gusty winds. And not only that, but Wilson County Fair going on too. And it looks like Lebanon seeing some heavy showers with a non severe thunderstorm at this time. I'll continue to monitor the situation and cut in when need be.